First of all, I do greet everybody of you. God bless you. Good morning. Then I would like to express my pleasure to be here with you in this room, in this beautiful both country and city. Thank you to all the organizers of our meetings and the wonderful events here and to all the participants, especially our listeners, young students, bachelors, masters, PhD candidates, and respected colleagues, of course. There is always a great happiness for me to go and enter into the auditorium, lecture room, and meet the hour with the youth. I assume that today's dialogue will serve for everybody of us mutual understanding, mutual respect, it means the improvement of communications. As you can see on the screen, the subject of our lecture is Georgia as a country of ancient civilization and cross-cultural polylog. It is not difficult to understand that this title consists of two parts. We start as expected with the first part, that is from the beginning. And so, uh, I am in a dilemma. What to tell you about my homeland, both motherland and fatherland, about Georgia as a country of ancient civilization. It is clear that here there are some ways of how I can narrate this story. Maybe it will be better to provide an overview of the books, monographs, encyclopedias, and scientific works, which are devoted to this subject. But there are too many of them. This would need us, you and me, to spend at least a few semesters together. I can see another way to write and to read a lot of quotations from the works of reputable authors, specialists in the history of antiquity, of ancient civilizations, of Georgia and its culture. But I do anticipate that the list of these authors make a very long chain, the end of which is not to be seen. But the time of our lecture goes. No, it runs inexorably, relentlessly, and incessantly. Reflecting on this, I remembered that in the internet somehow I stumbled upon a site that represented the different writings, including top ten list of best ancient civilizations. In last month, ancient Georgia was on the first place outpaced ancient Greece, Egypt, China, Rome, India, Persia, Aztec Empire. I thought it was just going to be very interesting what people think. Who took part in the vote of this rating and expressed preference given to Georgia 
or another country. Why did they do it? What are the criteria and parameters we believe that their civilization of a country outpaced other civilizations? So, I present to you the view not of the venerable scientists of past millennia, not of ancient writers, not of modern seekers of traces and artifacts of ancient cultures, not of museums, curators, and art restorers of antiquities, but of the ordinary internet users. There was it about 300 comments. Now I greet them, our unknown commentators, and I would express my gratitude to everybody of them for their helping in our job. So, why they think Georgia is one of the best ancient countries? What they know about Georgian culture? We were able to identify the main parameters and criteria on which our commentators, internet users, relied. Antiquity of history of the country and the people. Being the homeland of the first hominids in Europe, 1.8 million years ago. Being one of the oldest countries in the world which still exists. Being a country of the Golden Fleece. The narrative about which is of great antiquity and was current in the time of Homer in the 8th century BC. Being a country of Prometheus, Strabo talking about Prometheus and Amirani, Kolchi Hiberian hero, how he identifies them. Prometheus, in eternal punishment, is changed to a rock in the Caucasus, Kazbek mountain or mountain of Khvamli. Both of them are in Georgia. Both place of wine and wine making. The oldest known evidence of wine comes from Georgia. We are 8,000 year old wine jars we have found. Georgian origin of the word wine. It sounds in Georgian Rino. Having own unique three alphabets. And first of them, invented by King Parnavas I in the 3rd, 2nd centuries BC. The fact that the word medicine originates from the name of Medea, the main character of the Greek narrative of Argonauts, a daughter of Aeti, king of Colchis, country of Georgia at present one of the ancient centers of pharaohs and non-pharaohs metallurgy. Advanced goldsmith techniques that date back to the 3rd millennium BC. Georgian polyphony, the earliest polyphonic tradition not only in the Christian world, but also in the world civilization of 2nd, 3rd millennia BC original ancient national choreography of the second millennium BC and etc. etc. And yet, there is absolutely legitimate question. Is it enough to have the above listed indicators of antiquity of the civilization to consider the country and its people to be competent to enter into cross-cultural polylog and adequately participate in it. Thus, we come to the question, which is the second part of the title of this lecture, and so, what is polylog? Polylog 
in Greek, speech of many, is a conservation of many participants. It is assumed that speaker's role is transferred from one person to another, otherwise the conservation is converted into a monologue. Now we define what is cross-cultural. This term refers to any of various forms of interactivity between members of disparate cultural group. It has a common content with other concepts. Cross-cultural communication, interculturalism, intercultural relations, transculturation, transcultural communication. Cross-cultural communication involves the behavior of people working in the same environment, special dimension, but are of different cultures. Transcultural polylog. This is a concept of the Austrian philosopher Franz Martin Wimmer. He postulates that within interculturally orientated philosophy methods have to be found method when making other voices heard, so to speak, not only should be asked what they say and why, but also with what justification and due what beliefs and convictions. It is the way which lies between radicalism and universalism. And it has to be a third way to carry out the program of philosophy with the help of other cultures. Franz Wimmer calls this way polylogue, a dialogue of many. It is our understanding that cross-cultural polylogue is not a synthesis or a fusion of cultures, and they are subordination and submission to one another. But it is a space where cultures meet, interact, preserving their right to opacity, it means non-transparency. Today and now, we continue to experience exactly that time in the short term of which the face of the future of human culture is forming. It is historical process. The transcultural model seems a sort of right to be different. The model of cross-cultural communication requires a special type of translation and decryption of cultural codes of each subject. In this regard, the international community put the task to adequately respond to the new challenges and open asymmetric process of cross-cultural interaction. The global world, and the post-global world also, is necessary to build up in the dialogue of civilizations. As a common space of a multifaceted spirituality, always open and eternally being perfected in the process of understanding of the other. In such a reality, we cannot do anything without cross-cultural competence. What's this cross-cultural competence? In the literature, the parameters, indicators of cross-cultural communicative competence are formulated regularly, not always fully, with a large share of subjectivity and lack of transdisciplinarity. You know competence, it is the existence of the knowledge and experience required to operate effectively 
in a given subject area. Competence, it is a potential willingness to solve the problem with knowledge of the case, includes substantive and procedural components, it means knowledge and skills, and presupposes a knowledge of existing problems and the ability to solve it. Our research enabled us to identify the following parameters of cross-cultural competence. First of all, it is the ability to uh, adequately assess the communicative situation. It means to understand, appreciate and respect the factors that cause the culture and influences and influence on the perception, thinking, evolution and action both of our, of the representatives of native culture and of others, of the representatives of other cultures. And on this basis, to build a new framework for development. Then the second, possession of a certain body of knowledge about the native and other cultures, providing cultural interaction. It includes knowledge of others, self-knowledge, skills of interpretation and outreach, finding skills and or interaction, assessment of the other values, beliefs and behavior, and relativization of himself. Third, to put into practice intercultural communicative intentions. To do this, one must have a set of social skills and abilities using which it is possible to successfully communicate with patterns from other cultures, both in the everyday and professional contexts. Readiness for the polylogue, dialogue of cultures, the effective use of verbal and nonverbal means, a set of personality traits that contribute to the implementation of knowledge and skills. Fourth parameter. Presence of not only the ability to understand other cultures, as well as members of our own culture, but also the ability to adapt to the behavior of the representatives of other cultures and building new patterns of behavior based on the values and norms of different cultures. And the last fifth parameter of this competence, we think, is ability to strive to mix our own and others' cultural identity. And as a result of the exchange of positive examples of actions and patterns of decision-making to go to a qualitatively new synthesis of action to what is neither mine or ours or yours, but really new that it would not have been possible if we hadn't combined different views and approaches of all of ours, yours and theirs. Okay, now we understand that Georgia is one of the best countries of ancient civilization at first end. On the other hand, what is cross-cultural communicative competence? Now the question is what kind of relation exists between them? And what contribution can the ancient civilization of the country and the people make to the mutual understanding between different cultures? 
now we will try to answer. Many Western scholars vividly portray the culture in the form of an iceberg, at the base of which the cultural values and norms lie, and the pinnacle of the iceberg is individual human behavior based on them, on these values and norms, and primarily manifested is in communion with other people. As we have noted, only in communication with the adults and peers, a little child becomes a man, a person. Only through communication he passes inculturation and socialization, becomes representative of his people and his native culture. Only through communication people can relate their behavior to the actions of other people, forming with them a single social organism, society. In the processes of social interaction norms, values and institutions, a particular culture gain stable forms. As we have concluded in the beginning, Georgia is a country that has survived through millennia to preserve the unique and distinctive culture. A single literary language, three varieties of the native alphabet, polyphonic singing, uh, wine making, Christianity from apostolic times in this small country, five apostles, disciples of Jesus Christ preached. Statehood from the second millennium BC, the art of icon painting, cloisonne, jewelry embossing, and so on and so on. And all this is contained here underwater in the bottom of the iceberg, what is in the pinnacle. Specific characteristic behavior of Georgians, which expresses in excellent qualities rewarded to my native people by God, such as wisdom, generosity, warmth, friendliness, hospitality, virtue, chivalry, loyalty, benevolence, faithfulness, tolerance, piety, humanity, the belief in God, patriotism, internationalism, vitality, creativity, optimism, victorious, modesty, hard work, love of peace and hate evil. These properties allow the Georgians to become extremely competent in dealing with the different religions, ethnic groups, and cultural traditions. These properties allowed me to declare on the International Symposium last year, Georgia and the Georgian Church, which have a centuries-old cultural experience to conduct a dialogue between different civilizations, can perform the role of mediator between both East and West, and North and South. We have always tried to serve peaceful coexistence. We acquire and retain not only tolerance to different religions and ethnic groups, but also the ability to comprehend and appreciate their cultural identity. Let's recall the unique phenomena of the holy martyrs. Antimiverielli the Georgian and Grigol Peradze. Multilateral activities of these individuals in Europe and the role they played in the development of Romanian, Polish and also German cultures. Today, 
most of the international conflict falls on the central part of Eurasia. Georgia is located in the center of a tension of great powers. The United States, Germany, France, Italy, Turkey, Russia, Iran, China. It can really become one of the leading actors of peaceful dialogue of the international community. The right to such a statement gives one of the main indicators of cultural and ethnic identity of our people. Solid and unshakable belief in the victory of good over evil. And the belief that the main instrument of victory over evil is love. Georgian proverb says so. It destroyed hostility in order to restore only love. This love lived among the people, which obliged everybody, every Georgian, to forgive enemies, to see and depreciate their merits. A manifestation of the beauty of the Georgian spirit is the Georgian folk ballad about a young man and a tiger. The climax of the ballad is the desire of the bereaved mother of the deceased young man to go and to express sincere condolences to the mother of the tiger, the enemy, because she thinks tiger's mother can be more bitter Christ, and no one in this grief support her. After all, in Georgia for centuries, lived and fortunately now live Muslims of different nationalities. Not only Muslim Georgians, but also representatives of those countries which in the past has repeatedly encroached on the various parts of our country. A unique phenomenon is the so-called Turkish Georgians, preserving ethnic and historical roots and traditions, language, rituals, historical memory, that we are able to demonstrate a high civic activity both in the Ottoman Empire and the Turkish Republic. Jews has lived in Georgia since the 6th century BC. Relations between Jews and Georgians do not know not only no anti-Semitism, but also no facts of any everyday conflicts, abuse or violence. It is very interesting how Georgian Jews live and work in the state of Israel. In the study of this issue, we drew attention to the, to the ethnocultural, ethnosocial, and ethno-psychological characteristics that distinguish Israeli people from Georgia to other Jews, which served to their successes in the social, artistic, and political spheres at the national and international levels. Here we present a ceremony of opening of auditorium dedicated to the memory of the great political figure and outstanding person Shimon Peres. The Georgian state has been a stronghold of the peaceful coexistence of the peoples of the Caucasus and the Georgian church served as a kind of religious leader at least among the Christian nations before the appearance of Russia in the Caucasus. 
This was followed by the elimination of the Georgian royal dynasty on the throne, on the throne and control. A Georgian apostolic church absolutely illegally lost its autocephaly, all legal and canonical rights and priorities. Cruelty Tsarist regime also affected many other religious centers in the Caucasus up to their disappearance. The last period, the three decades since the 19th of last century, characterized by artificially created, difficult, complex political situation in Georgia with Abkhazians, Ossets, Russian. Today, the representatives of these fraternal peoples freely and without any limitations reside in the territory of Georgia. However, in an area that can not be controlled by the Georgian authorities, in Abkhazia and Samachablo, Tsinvali region, almost no Georgians live. They are in exile. After the Russian Georgian War in 1992, 1993, 200, people were forced to leave Abkhazia, becoming thus forced internal displaced persons. After the war in August 2008, it suffered the same fate, 25,000 people from Tsinvali origin. In these Georgian territories, there is pitiable condition of monuments of Georgian cultural heritage. Feeling full brunt and the whole tragedy of Georgian Abkhazian and Georgian Ossets conflicts, I say to you today, my friends, so even though we face the difficulties of today and tomorrow. I say to you today, dear friends from around the world, from all over the planet Earth, I say to you the immortal words of the immortal man named Martin Luther King. I still have a dream. Yes. It is a dream deeply rooted in the ancient dream of all Caucasian freedom-loving peoples. I have a dream today. We hold this trust to be self-evident that all men are created equal. I have a dream that one day even the states sweltering with the heart of injustice, sweltering with the heat of oppression, will be transformed into an oasis of freedom and justice. I have a dream today. I have a dream that one day, right down in Abkhazia and Tsinvali region, little Georgian boys and Georgian girls will be able to join hands with little Abkhazian and Osset boys and Abkhazian and Osset girls as sisters and brothers. I have a dream today. This is our hope. This is the faith. With this faith, we will be able to hew out of the mountain of despair a stone of hope. With this faith, we will be able to transform the jangling discords of our nation into a beautiful symphony of brotherhood. With this faith, we will be able to work together, to pray together, to struggle together, to stand up for freedom together, knowing that we, 
Georgians. Abkhazians and Ossetians will be free. We'll be together one day. This will be the day. The initiator and organizer of various intercultural and interreligious dialogue is the Catholicos Patriarch of all Georgia, His Holiness and Beatitude Ilya II, under the auspices of the Georgian Patriarchate. Several forms have been held, which was attended by representatives of various countries and international organizations, scientists, cultural figures, politicians and religious leaders. Georgian Church cooperates with the United Nations, the World Health Organization, the Global Fund, the European Council, the Konrad Adenauer Foundation, and now we are glad that we began to collaborate with the Foundation Romualdo del Bianco in Italy, and we would like to express our gratitude for this opportunity to share our thoughts on the cross-cultural polylogue and the possible role of Georgia and the Georgian Church can play in the peaceful settlement of international conflicts, not only in Georgia, not only in the Caucasus, but also in other regions. We are talking about international function of Georgia in interreligious and cross-cultural communication between the East and the West, North and South, as a mediator contributing polylogue between different cultures, as a country of ancient civilization, which is both the carrier and the guardian of this most ancient civilization, which means that Georgia is characterized by a significantly high level indicators of cross-cultural communicative competence. Thank you for attention.